So lately on YouTube, I've had all kinds of videos recommended to me, usually titled something like, can you beat insert game here and a challenge to go behind it. Some of these include stuff like, can you beat Fallout 3 using only fists, or can you beat Sonic R without jumping, or can you beat New Super Mario Bros U without pressing right, among many other games, you know, like Dead Rising and that. Well, I decided to watch a fair few of these videos and got my own idea of a challenge I could make for Buddy, and that challenge I came up with is, can you beat Buddy Scholarship Edition using Sonic Speed? Now for this challenge I am using mods, namely the Super Mod 4, as that mod does give us the option to change Jimmy's speed from outright freezing him at 0% all the way up to 500%, and we want to beat Buddy as fast as we can. Well, not in the speedrunning sense, but you know what I mean. Now I am using other mods, but none of these really affect gameplay. These mods I'm using are Reshade, the Anniversary Edition Hood mod for PC, various beta skins for the characters, and Jimmy of course, and the HD Overhaul mod. In the event there is a part which freezes or is actually impossible, I'll lower the speed limit. But I think we should set a speed limit, like if we go any lower than say, about, I oh don't know, let's just say 210% we fail the challenge, as that's just double speed, not the sonic speed which we want for this challenge. Now I say 210% because it's lower, and it's basically double speed. Hell, even just 210% is just pushing it. I also think to keep this as a challenge, the speed cannot go back up, like if we fall to 450% we cannot up it back to 500 afterwards, but depending on circumstances, that will change. So starting off at Welcome to Bullworth, even though it's only the first mission of the game, it already shows us what we need to be wary of, as even just jumping down the banister after meeting Dr. Gravelsnitch actually took away half of our health, something that doesn't happen usually. So we need to make a quick stop off just to refill our health, but thankfully the animations here are that fast we waste no time at all. Now the fighting tutorial here was less of a tutorial and more so a hit the buttons and hope they register kind of thing, as trying to grab Wade here was a bit of a hit and miss because of how fast the animations were. So after dealing with him we see that Jimmy now gives zero Russell comes up to attack, but Jimmy doesn't even flinch. So that's welcome to Bullworth dealt with, however this is your school being the second mission in the entire game out of like, what, 58 missions I believe? This mission was actually a pain in the ass. The mission itself is fine, but like we can deal with Russell, and when we go to loot the locker, we actually learn that we loot it that fast, we get two rewards instead of just one. We ain't run Kyle the Prefect and that, but when we get to Eunice, problems start to arise. After getting the chocolates back from Konstantinos, we give them back to her, and the game just, well, as you'd expect, softlocks. So this is going to be a headache, isn't it? So I was an idiot and restarted at 495%, and it actually crashed when meeting Russell this time. But since this didn't happen at 500%, I'll just guess that was an unfortunate crash. Anyway, trying 495% again, unsurprisingly, still resulted in the soft lock, so we knocked our speed down to 460. Nope, still a soft lock. So let's try that one number that most Muppets love, 420%, because for some f reason people find it hilarious. And no, 420% still gives us another soft lock. It just seems that Jimmy's really, really hesitant to kiss Eunice today. So let's knock it down even more to about 360% and pray to the gods above that we can actually kiss Eunice and get on with the story. It's still another bloody softlock. At this point, it's driving me mad. I mean, we're only at like, what, the second bloody mission at 58 and we already seem to have hit a brick wall. Of course you could say to take Jimmy's speed back down to 100% and then up it back up to 500% after kissing Eunice, but I feel that's really defeating the challenge here. So we knock it down to 300% and I really, really hope this works, otherwise I'll give up. And hallelujah, we can actually progress now. Well, I guess you probably already could tell that by the length of the video. Anyway, so after that annoying thing, we have to go to class and I was sort of hoping the classes would be harder since Jimmy's moving at 300%, however the classes do remain the same. But onto the setup, and even though Davis is right in front of us, we can easily catch up to him. But we cannot damage him. We can actually sort of skip over most of the fights here, like I ran past the gate as it was closing and the garage door. However, I noticed I couldn't take Davis on until I opened the gate from the inside. And we ran into another issue. However, this one is me being a moron and wasting my firecrackers on the bodies. Because at 300%, I cannot pick any item up off the floor. So I need to knock myself out. And I noticed at 300% speed, every time I jump, I do lose a bit of health. So I just kept jumping until I was knocked out, then went to the dorm, picked up some firecrackers and tried the setup again, this time with actual success. Now thankfully, the rest of chapter 1 didn't really give us any more problems, aside from some really small annoyances. Like for example, in Slingshot, I noticed that because of Jimmy's speed, we sort of have rapid fire. And because of that, I turned too fast and ended up hitting Gary twice in the row instead of the windows in the bus. And in Save Algae, 
Well, it did take longer than needed because algae is really, really slow. For Defend Bucky, because of our speed, we managed to save him before any real harm came to him. Well, that was until I lobbed the firecracker at him. Which was... by mistake. Sort of. And after completing that mission, we get our skateboard, which may actually save our ass in a future mission or so. Because even though Jimmy moves at 300% speed, the skateboard does bring us back down to our natural speed, as if we never used the 300% speed at all. Now, I did go back to 500% speed to see how like, the skateboard handles and that, and Jimmy doesn't even equip the skateboard this time, he just skates on thin air. Anyway, back to doing missions, and in that bitch, I managed to break into an extra locker after throwing a stink bomb in Mandy's. However, I was caught by her, but not the Prefect. So, that mission was a success. Sort of. And so the mission the Cantata began, and that actually wasn't any more difficult or any more easier, because in this mission we just spend all of it scoped in. Because our speed is naturally back to 100% when scoped in apparently. So after unlocking the super slingshot, I noticed we did have rapid fire now. So in an ironic twist, the game does seem to be much easier with 300% speed than it is harder. Halloween rolls around, got no issues doing any of the pranks, so we begin the last mission of Chapter 1, Help Gary. Now we've managed to beat up all three of the bullies before Gary even arrived, and very nearly got stuck in this cage. We somehow survived an electrocution as well, and we make our way down the hole to take on Russell Northrup. Now this battle was piss easy. Because of how fast Jimmy attacks, Russell didn't even get the chance to breathe and he's already knocked out. So the entirety of chapter 1 is doable at sonic speed, but will chapter 2 follow suit? Well, let's find out. Beginning our punishment handed to us by Dr. Cravelsnitch, we go and see Edna and start last minute shopping. We can actually beat this mission quicker by completely skipping Edna's bike and running into town. We get our stuff, get ourselves a new look, run all the way back to school and we see Gary being beaten up by Damon, which is deserved. After giving Edna her items, we pay Mr. Galloway a visit despite not attending any of his classes since the game started. Now while this mission wasn't any trouble at all, I did make the completely moronic choice to jump from the second floor of the school, and got knocked out. So I started again, and this time I used my skateboard to jump to safety. We give Miss Phillips some bottles, and run all the way to the Preppies Boxing Gym to enter their competition. Now all three of Jimmy's boxing opponents were met with the absolute thrashing of a lifetime, with all of them being out within 15 seconds, and we get our beach house. Now on the way to the clubhouse, we stopped by to help Pinky with her impatience, there were no issues here, but when we had to deal with Eunice, I almost got a Vietnam flashback from the beginning of this challenge. I really did not want to freeze here, especially since I didn't save the game since before the Russell fight. Now thankfully I didn't freeze, but walking with her was a bit annoying because of speed differences. I like how Jimmy kept the chocolates for himself however. After saving our game, we head over to Huckleberry and buy ourselves a nice new vest to blend in with the preps. After seeing how easy the game has actually become, I'm considering making it more difficult if the difficulty doesn't start showing by the end of the chapter. And yes, I know what I said earlier might have been like, you know, I'm not going to do this, but I feel like I want this to be a challenge, you know, not just like a breeze. But yeah, let's get on with it again. So we meet up with Tad and deliver the eggs to his house. We get ambushed, but our speed gives us a major advantage here, and we can go completely psycho on the preps and run as far as humanly possible back to the movie theatre for our date with Pinky. Surprisingly, this was a bit difficult, because of our speed we cannot mash the A button on the test of strength, and because of my anniversary edition hood mod, the ball size made dunking the midget really difficult. But after a few times, we succeed, get our 10 tickets, buy our teddy bear for Pinky, get a kiss, and also get our ears blown out. Before stopping off at the dorm to speak to Pete again, I decided to pay the homeless man a visit and give him another radio transistor in return for learning the knee sweep. Now this was a little bit difficult due to timing, but definitely doable after a few tries. And upon returning to the dorm, we have our first bike race. So this mission is exactly the same as it would be if we weren't using this mod. But that still didn't stop me from bobbing a few firecrackers at the start of the race, so we're guaranteed victory. 100% speed or not. At this point, I want to say that I want to do a challenge here instead of an easy game. So I've decided on changing the difficulty up. Now what I'll do here is, I'll bump my speed back up to 500%. But, when I have to give somebody an item, I may knock down the speed back to 300%. I'm fully aware and fully understand if you think this invalidates a challenge, but to me, I really want to play the game at the fastest speed I can, and being stuck at a cutscene because of it I think does ruin the challenge itself. So if I struggle with a mission at say 500%, then I will reduce the speed again. But item given cutscenes are definitely going back to 300%. I do completely understand if you think this does invalidate the challenge. Anyway, back to the story, and Gord steals our trophy, and even though we can catch up to him, we actually cannot harm him. So we just kick 
faster than Sonic the Hedgehog on crack, so we just beat up Gord as normal and collect our trophy. After doing so, we find Russell bullying the local shopkeeper and we go to Egg Taz's house. But because of our speed, we can actually outrun Russell on his bike, however, Russell somehow knows how to teleport, as he's already at Tad's gate, even though we somehow left him down by the shops. Anyway, Egg in the house was an absolute breeze, we were in and out in just about 30 seconds, it was that fast, was already back in the main bar by the time Tad noticed. So, off to find Pete and decide how to deal with the preps. Now, as we take Pete's advice and run to the gym, we see boxing at 500% is actually really difficult. Because Jimmy's that fast, the punches don't even connect, and because of this, Biff has a slightly upper hand here. It seems like 1 out of every 10 punches hit, so it's impossible to do a combo here, and I actually did fail this mission the first time. Don't bother getting up! Don't mess with the preps, Hopkins! We want blood, and stay down! I've got a lot now the second time doing this, I figured out a tactic. Because Jimmy moves at 500%, I have to use this to my advantage, and move back when Biff's about to strike, and keep hitting the punch button and repeat. Surprisingly, it took about 4 or so rounds to do, and onto the fight with Darby Harrington. Now this was the kind of challenge I wanted, and I'm finally glad we're starting to get some. So Darby Harrington tries to show us up, but we somehow beat him to the bar area before he even gets there. As soon as the fight began, I instantly shut both of the doors, but Jimmy's that fast we managed to do it before Gord even entered. But somehow Gord managed to enter even though the door was shut. Because logic, or maybe Gord's got some superpowers, I don't know. But once both doors are shut, Darby, Gordon, Parker all suffered the same fate as our dear friend Russell did when we decided to beat him up in the hole. So yes, the entirety of Chapter 2 is beatable at sonic speed, 300% and 500%. So onto the third chapter to see if we can keep this up. And so we start off the third chapter of Buddy by doing the worst part of Buddy, which is the Santa story. Starting off with Balls of Snow, we have no issues with this mission aside from having rapid fire, which is actually a small issue. I only fouled once because I accidentally hit one of the townsfolk because I was just smashing R faster than... Well, I don't think I can actually say that to be honest. But yeah, so from that we had no big issues, and later on we meet Santa relieving himself in an alleyway, we get tasked to smash up the local grotto, and we do so, but thanks to our speed it's all over within 30 seconds. In fact, this mission is actually beatable in just about 20 seconds even without 500% speed, so yeah. Anyway, Christmas begins, we get our present, take part in the holiday medley against our wishes. Now this mission doesn't really give us any issues, it's just really long and tedious and I really wish it wasn't in the game at all. But yeah, and after this we have our last mission of the Santa storyline, which is to take photos for him, and none of these missions gave us any issues at all, thankfully. So onto the main part of Chapter 3, the Greaser storyline with Johnny Vincent. Now the first Johnny Vincent mission didn't give us any issues either. Bait was a bit chaotic as my speed meant we kept losing Gord, and I assaulted some random git on the way and actually nearly got caught by the police, but once he lured Gord to the park, it was all really easy. Now tagging actually did give us a game breaking issue. When tagging, Jimmy would freeze in place, forcing me to refresh Jimmy's position by the super mod. So after trying a few times, I found out we can avoid freezing if we tag with the cannon in our hand to begin with. But other than that, we showed the Greasers who ruled New Coventry, and so we got on our way to save Algernon for Ernest. Saving Cornelius from his beating was easy, and once we find Algy, the rest of the mission was just like the Candidate, as we spend the mission all scoped in. So this mission is no different than the final game. We begin our race with Johnny Vincent, but since this is all on bikes, this race isn't any different from the final game either. However, I did have one very sly and dirty tactic up my sleeve at the end of the race. So after winning Lola over, we bust into the tenements, but rather than pick up her items, we just make a beeline for the top floor where we get ambushed by Norton. We can exploit his sledgehammer battle here. Now earlier in the video, I mentioned that it's impossible to pick melee stuff up off the floor, and in this mission, Lola's items are behind a wall which can only be destroyed with Norton's hammer, which doesn't drop until he's beaten. But by standing near the wall and running at the right time, we can escape his arena and lure him into smashing the walls for us. After doing this, we can knock him out, and we're golden. Just temporarily knock our speed back down to 300% to return our items, and we're done. So after a 5 minute relationship with Lola, we have to put an end to the preppy greaser brawl that's broken out, and we have to find Peanut. We find him, we beat him to his own hideout, and all the greasers are down quicker than our relationship we just had. However, here we have an actual game breaking issue. Now this isn't a fault with the speed itself, no, this is actually a fault with Supermod. At the Johnny Vincent boss fight, Supermod will always crash. Well, freeze more or less. 
So we have to think of a workaround for this, and luckily I found one. I edited the files, specifically pedstats.dat, to force 500% speed for Jimmy without the need for Supermod, and we tried to fight Johnny Vincent again. Well, once we swap out Supermod for the original script files, that is. And we tried to fight Johnny Vincent again. This time it actually worked, so we get chased by police, but this time I felt a bit cocky and tried to outrun the police on foot, which failed. So I had to do the first part of the mission normally on a bike, but once I knew we was close to actually fighting Johnny, I quickly hopped off and just ran the rest of the way. And when we began fighting Johnny, we used our rapid fire slingshot on the greasers, Johnny loses his bike, and his den arguably faster than Russell was. Well, maybe not. But yeah, Chapter 3 is entirely doable at 500% speed with no need to ever reduce it, aside from returning Lola's items to her. So now it's time to turn our attention to Ernest and Ted for the fourth chapter, and we start off the chapter by beating up Pete for laughing at us. So upon starting Stronghold Assault, I learned that this mission is not 500% speed friendly, as you have to be in a specific position to jump over the barriers, and you can't just run to the observatory because I got down there faster before Ernest could even station his defences. So I had to run back and take down a few nerds just to get Ernest to spawn. After taking his transformer down, I didn't pay attention to my health and I got knocked out. Fun, so now I've got to do all that again. Second try, I managed to get knocked out again, but this time I actually had nearly full health and I guess the nerds just got lucky. The third time I tried Stronghold Assault, so I just flat out crashed to a black screen. This is actually getting as annoying as that Eunice issue from the beginning of the game. Now the fourth time I tried this, I repaired myself. I knocked out Algy and Melvin, but didn't collect their health pickups. So when shooting the door down, and I was on low health, I quickly hopped off the cannon, got my health refilled, broke into Ernest's observatory with, well, most of my health intact, thankfully. The battle with Ernest actually wasn't difficult, he seemed to put up more of a fight outdoors than indoors, and it really shows. Also ignore the pink boxes, the textures are missing through the HD mod. Now getting the photos Ernest wanted of Mandy didn't give us any problems, in fact we ran past Ms Peabody on the top floor of the dorm before she could even turn around. Now Funhouse Fun did actually give us some issues, as at the beginning we couldn't crouch at all. I tried lobbing a firecracker through the hole, you know, to attack Bo and Kirby, see if that could like, trigger the cutscene, but that didn't work. I think crouching at 500% must be one of those frame specific things because I just kept hammering that rope thumb stick down and eventually I get ever babe what I would say is about 50 or so presses, probably another exaggeration but yeah over a high amount of presses I finally managed to crouch. And I managed to carry on doing the rest of the mission normally. Well I couldn't stand back up that is until Bo hit me so yeah. So I guess like, when crouching, that's something you need to look out for, you can't actually like get up or down. If you do get down, you have to wait to be hit again. So the rest of Fun Haze Fun was just normal, I guess. You know, we didn't have any issues. Defender of the Castle rolls around, and since there's no mission failure for letting the barricade break, this mission is no different from the 100% speed version because we're stationed on the cannon for most of it. Now, Nice Outfit is probably the best mission for this because after annoying the mascot, I honestly love how fast Jimmy just zips off in the cutscene while the slow ass jocks give chase. I really do love this scene, I don't even know why. I'm gonna maim you! You and our women, boy! Nobody beats the mascot but the jocks! I'm gonna pump you! You don't deserve And yeah, there's no issues here since we completely destroy the mascot by kicking his face in. Literally. So we get our new costumes and make things right by tagging over Mandy's posters, as long as we have our can in our hand when we start the mission, well, tagging the posters you'll say, we have no issues with this either. And now for the climax of chapter 4, the big game. Now the first part of this mission actually does make Jimmy look like he's having some kind of fit, as we never need to bother with the dance again, since most of this mission can be done before the jocks attack. Well, all the objectives in the mission can be done before the jocks attack as long as we're quick. Now since the animations are fast, there's no risk to us here. You know, we do all the normal stuff like chucking marbles on the field, um, throwing like the rigged ball and that. And probably the best part of this mission is, well, pissing in the cooler, because we do so in front of Kirby and Damon, and Kirby still takes a nice refreshing swig. There's a rumour that someone's gonna screw up the game. This is too much for me. I don't even know why, did Damon dare him to do this, or... You know, since they clearly see Jimmy doing this, and I think I'll just say that for a different video, to be honest. Let's carry on with this. I honestly prefer not to think about it. 
But yeah, when the drop boss fight rolls around, we realise we're in some deep trouble because the whole point of this fight is just to throw the balls back at Ted, and I apologise if you can hear that dog outside. Anyway, as I was saying, and we cannot pick these balls up at all. So we have to try and beat this fight bit throwing a single ball, and while it is possible, by god is it tedious and difficult. Option 1 is just to, you know, try and punch the team, but they'll always end up jumping us and we can never really get a punch in. Now option 2 is to try and bore Ted into throwing a ball at his own friends, which is also very difficult. I won't bore you with the entire footage, well let's face it, most of you probably aren't even watching this part, but yeah, this did drag like mad. Especially dealing with Damon on the second wave, Ted seemed to take down the other attackers who we don't need to deal with more than anybody else. It was just tedious. You know, it's like every time we tried to get a punch in, we'd always get jumped and then thrown. And by the time Ted threw a ball, they would always end up just hitting us and for some reason it would glitch out and not hurt me or Damon or anybody who was like throwing me at the time. But it would hurt the, well, I don't know what to call them, I'd say the second wave attackers, you know, like those kind. They always ended up hitting them more than me and Damon obviously. It took me dead on 10 minutes to actually take down Ted and his crew. And honestly, I never ever want to do this fight again unless I know I can throw the balls. But I'm finally glad we can get on to the 5th chapter. We're near the end now, but that doesn't mean it's going to go smoothly. So we start off the 5th chapter by taking a visit to City Hall to lay down our tag. However, there's this one specific ladder, which we cannot climb. Because as soon as we get to the top of, we just slip off of it, and get knocked out. So after getting knocked out, I went back to this ladder and tried 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 again, but nothing. So looks like we're going to have to lower our speed because we just kept constantly slipping and getting knocked out. So we're just going to keep lowering by 10 until, well, we can actually climb it. And this is the result. Four hundred and ten percent is that perfect number. Let's go back to the dorm and then back to town hall. And we slip again. I'm not even bothering at this point. What even is the point of this challenge anymore? Again, after getting down again and feeling like a right tit, I went back to that ladder and learned there's a very specific time frame. Just as Jimmy climbs, he'll stand there for a fraction of a second. In this time, run forward and Jimmy will avoid slipping off. I try this three more times just to confirm it works, and it does. So let's try this mission now for the third time. Finally, we succeed. The entire town is annoyed by our success and we use our skateboard to jump down to safety. We get our photo and find out we're hated by everybody. We take a visit to the library and rats in the library was no problem at all. Although I will admit I just spammed the super slingshot here. Now for the gym is burning, this was definitely the worst part of this run for me, even worse than the big game. You see, when you start the mission you have to rescue Mandy, Kirby and Yuri, and Yuri has a fire which only breaks out after you rescue him from a fallen structure, meaning we'll have to pick up the fire extinguisher again, which we can't because we're at 500% speed. However, rather than realise that, I saved Yuri last and thought the run was over here because I thought Yuri had two fires, one before and one after. So I remembered that this mission ends the second after Jimmy enters the girls locker room. So, I tried using a skateboard to do that exploit and failed the mission about twice and wasted about 20 minutes. Then I realised that Yuri only has one fire, which only happens after you rescue him from the structure. I felt like such a moron realising that I'm wasting a lot of time. So, I rescued Yuri first, then did all the fires, left Kirby until last, and yes, the mission was doable. But it wasn't because of me being a moron. So after that I was finally glad to move on to finding Johnny Vincent, which in a really relieving way didn't give us any problems at all, aside from the gate at the very end of the mission, which did take us a few tries to open, but thankfully it did open. With Johnny rescued we meet Zoe Taylor and get our revenge on Mr Burton, and this mission was a walk in the park, pun intended, no more problems thankfully. 
So Preppy's van blows up next and this mission was just like revenge on Mr Burton since all we had to do was go from point A to point B to point C and back to point A again. Thankfully our 410% speed made this mission so much more bearable when returning the photos to Darby and Biff. We get expelled, we shoot Pete again and we're on our way to Russell's house to bust into the townies hideout. But because of our speed we can keep up with Russell on foot even though he's speeding on a storm and police bike. Russell nearly kills himself and now we're going after Edgar Munson and we had absolutely no issues taking down the defending dropouts or pressing any of the buttons. When we go to confront Omar, I wanted to stop to refill my spud gun but I couldn't because of that crouching issue from Funhouse Fun, so I accidentally triggered the fight, but somehow got into the hole because crouching at 410% is much easier than it is at 500%. So we have to chase Edgar down the plant, has a small issue with the crouching part again, and used our skateboard to jump down and skip most of the chase. We begin our fight with him, but as all of the fights during this run, Edgar is mostly a pushover because of rapid fire, and I think I somehow glitched the game with a speed mod because Edgar didn't bother picking up his pipe, nor did he attack. We never used any pipe in this battle, but for some reason Jimmy still uses one in the cutscene. So we find Zoe, then go to rescue Russell, who still has the ability to teleport. Jimmy, there you are. I don't know what to do. Come on out. No one's gonna hurt you. And so begins the end game. We tank on all the major clicks, and all of them were major pushovers. I don't even think Russell got hit once during this mission. But yeah, we had no problems at all, and now we have one final mission, which is to take down Gary Smith. Even though Jimmy actually outruns him up the stairs. As we begin our chase we see that Gary can also teleport, and we catch up to him. But as we run up the stairs we get crushed by a bell. This somehow triggered the final showdown battle, even though technically speaking Gary should have won here because Jimmy just got crushed by a bell. Now surprisingly Gary is actually the second hardest boss in the game, only behind Ted Thompson because we have no weapons and our punches rarely hit. But we did it, we managed to complete Buddy. So can you beat Buddy at sonic speed? Yes, yes you can, around 410%, or well 300% when giving gifts to girls, and 500% in most of the cases. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, be sure to subscribe for more Buddy content, I hope to see you all at the next video. I apologise for the abrupt ending on that, but I'm actually glad to actually finish this now because making this video was a bit tedious, you know the issues I mentioned in it. So yeah, thank you for watching, have a great day and I do hope to see you at the next one.